welcome to Be Live. This is a woman's only Facebook Live. And this is one of our shows, or one of our segments on the Couples Academy Daily Show. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited about today. Today was really important to me because this signifies a time in my life where I'm going through a major transformation. There's nothing wrong. There's no crisis. There's no issue. It's because I want to grow as an individual. I want to grow as a woman. And I've discovered that there, as I've grown and as I've matured, there are different needs that I have. There are different wants that I have. I'm becoming a different person. And I want to become a whole person. Um, and I can't tell you how many people, how many women I talk to across the world who are going through similar situations in their lives. So I'm not sure if it's a 40s thing. No, because not everybody's 40. I don't care. I don't know if it's a midlife thing. But every woman gets to a point in their life where they want more. More adventure. More money. More time. More love, maybe more peace, you know, they just, we just want more. And something happens where we really do have this insatiable desire and we don't have peace until we get it. And sometimes we don't even know what it is. Sometimes we're not quite sure. What is it? Why don't I have peace? Why am I sad? Why do I feel depressed? Why do I feel like nothing ever goes my way? Why do I feel like I'm always in this rat race and I've done all this to accomplish all these things, but I still don't have what I want. And maybe I don't even know what I want. Maybe I'm at this point where I have, you know, accomplished everything that I had set out to accomplish. I've got my degrees. I've got my dream job. I've got my dream car and my dream home, but still something's, something's not clicking. I'm still not happy. And I'm just finding that a lot of women are finding themselves in place and listen guys gals we pour out have you ever heard of the Proverbs 31 woman the virtuous woman all that she did she took she clothed her family she got up early she was a homemaker she honored and respected her husband she was out in industry making money building businesses and coming home and no doubt when she got home she was getting whatever she earned, whatever she made, or whatever she purchased, maybe the chicken. She went out there and got some yams, and she came home, and she peeled the yams, and she cooked the chicken, and she plated the food, and she put it in front of her family. And then you know what else she did? She probably hugged and kissed her children. She probably, oh, Amber Alert. <laughs> you shouldn't ignore those guys. If you're getting an Amber Alert, pay attention to those. That's really important. But she was... A virtuous woman and she had so many things going on and she was relied upon by so many women and I don't know about you guys but I know what that feels like I'm that woman I, now I'm not tooting my horn and saying I'm this virtuous woman we're all virtuous women because there's something inside of us that that rises up to the occasion no matter what the situation is we're the ones that's going to make sure everything is all right not saying that the husbands don't Okay? The husbands are very focused on what they're trying to do, they're building, they're strategizing, but women, we bring that whole picture together. You know, someone once told me, and I love this compliment, because I'm someone that always looked at my husband like, oh my God, he's so amazing, he's so awesome, he can speak, he can do this, he can do that, and one day hopefully I could do that, and I always looked at him with such regard, and I still do. But one time we spoke together, this was years ago, maybe one of the first times we spoke together, actually, when I, when I think about it, and um, the, one of the people who were listening to the conversation, or it, I don't know if it was a call or a webinar, whatever it was, said to me that together we're like a color, like a, a color sheet, you know, like those coloring sheets that your kids get, and that Hassani is like the whole outline of it, right, but that I bring the color. And I just was like, oh my God, I'm like, really? I, I, I bring the color, you know? I loved that compliment. And I think that that really speaks to women in general. We really do bring color. What do I mean by color? Because we're, so, we're called on in so many ways. We bring the color because if something is good, if there's an outline or a structure, we're gonna make it what it needs to be, a home. We're gonna furnish it. We're gonna make it comfortable. 
a meal. It's not going to just be food on a plate. It's going to have flavor and pizzazz. It's going to be plated beautiful. Do you know what I'm saying? Bedtime is going to be a certain way for the kids. Mommy's going to hug and kiss and tuck the baby in, right? Read them a story. Moms go the extra mile. Women go the extra mile. And I think it's about time that we realize that someone has got to be looking after us. Now, that's not to say that you don't have family and loved ones that care for you and that look after you. Of course you do. But you are the only one that can care for you and treat you the way you need to be treated. And that's what V-Life is about. It's really honoring our virtues. It's, it's really putting it on the table and saying, hey, these are all the beautiful things that we bring to the table. This is who we are. Let's first acknowledge these things in ourselves. So I'm really, really happy to be. I found this uh, book. It's called We, a manifesto for women everywhere. And when I found the book, I really didn't think much of it. I said, okay, this is just going to be the next thing that I'm reading. Um, and, and I started listening to it. Actually, I downloaded it on Audible. And it has really done some major things to, for me spiritually. Um, and I want to share with you the five essential principles that I've been working through. And these things are things that you're supposed to be doing daily. Um, they seem really simple. It's not going to be anything you've never heard. But it's really about putting these things in place and really being committed to choosing you. I mean, my God, like, we, are, we make so many excuses why we don't choose each other. Thank you. Thank you for the love. We make so many excuses why we don't choose ourselves. We choose everyone, and we're last. We make all kinds of excuses why we can't get to the gym. I'm guilty, but I've been going three days in a row. Yes. And <laughs> we make all kinds of excuses why we can't say buy ourselves something nice or treat ourselves to a spa or just get by ourselves, don't we? Can I just get an amen for moms? I don't want to know. I want to know if I'm alone in this because to be honest with you, I am someone that suffered from severe mommy guilt. Why should I feel guilty about wanting to close my door, my bedroom door, lock my bedroom door, go into the bathroom and lock the bathroom door so that I can be alone when I go to the restroom? Do you know what I'm saying? Does anybody else experience mommy guilt where you just want to take five to ten minutes for yourself to clear your mind, to think, to pray, to meditate, right? Clear your mind. I mean, there's so much on a woman's mind because God created us that way, that we can multitask and multi-think. And where someone else might be thinking two to three things, we are thinking 500 things things all at one time and somehow some way we are going to work that thing and get it to happen all of them right we're not going to miss a beat we might feel confused and stressed over it but somehow we make it happen so i want us and i want to challenge you girls out there that if you want more you know whatever that is if you just want more peace in your day if you're just at a point where in your life where you're like, you know, I've been living this life just like this for however many years and I feel stuck. I don't know what's next. You know, I want more, but I'm not sure what that more is. Or, you know, I've been hurt. I, I'm still holding on to bitterness from my past. Someone from my family ha has offended me or hurt me in some way and I haven't been able to get over it. Or, you know, just issues with the family that you haven't talked to a family member in so long. These are the things that I challenge you to actually face and work through. Because, listen, y'all, we are all on a journey. Like, we are all on a journey. And God created a world so magnificent that we can all be on an individual journey, but also be intertw intertwined and connected with each other and have each other's answers. And a couple years ago, I went through another phase where I'm like, okay, I, there's some changes that I need to make. And I challenged a group of women. I said, listen, women, if you are sick and tired of being tired, do you know what it was? I'll tell you. I'll be honest with you because this is going to be a group of transparency. <laughs> I was sick and tired of charging less for my services than my services were worth. I was doing things better. I was working harder. 
I knew my stuff in and out. I was committed. I was loyal. You could trust me. You know, people people have no idea in the business that I'm in and advertising how slimy people could be, screwing you out of your web pages and just really screwing you over. But I had integrity. And I was constantly shortchanging myself and, and allowing people to, to uh, taking on clients that were not willing to pay me what I was worth. So that was my thing. But the other women that joined me, they had their thing, whatever their thing were. And they were sick and tired of something and were willing to put it all on the line and say, okay, this year I'm done with that. And so I'm there again. It's not about finance. It's not about business. All of that is going well and hopefully continue to get better. Hopefully, right? I mean, prayerfully get better and better. But I want more out of me. I want to raise myself to another standard. I want to love harder, love bigger. I want to own my life. You know what I mean? Like, I want to say, you know what, Daniel, you're important, and I want to be committed to taking care of me. And what does that mean? Like, for me, I want to take care of my health. I'm 40. I don't want to squander my health. I don't want to squander my time. So that's part of the journey that I'm on, getting my body together, getting my mind together, getting my spirit together, and really owning my life. So that's what I want to challenge all of you women to participate. And I see my girls around here. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Roxanne. Hey, Jewel. I'm so glad you guys are here. Hey, Donna. Hey, Tamika. Hey, Candy's here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So listen, y'all, this is, this is the journey that um, some of my girlfriends and I have started. And I personally feel that I'm still at the beginning of it because life is busy. There's a lot going on in my business um, with the children, but enough excuses. And this is really going to help help hold me accountable as I go through this. So here are, first of all, the book. It's called We, a manifesto for women everywhere. I really recommend that you get it. You may not agree with everything. I don't. I chew up some meat and I spit out some bones, but I'm old enough, I'm wise enough, and I'm mature enough to be able to apply everything in there to what is applicable to me and what gives me peace understand me so when you hearing it folks look don't don't come down on me if there's something in there that was said that does not sound right or holy or whatever look chew up the meat spit out the bones take what you can get out of it leave the rest on the table do you hear what i'm saying that's one of the things that we need to overcome is just being so stuck and scared you know scared to step out of our box and uh, and, and do something different I remember one time, and I'm going to get to the five daily essential practices. Um, Hassani is helping me watch my time. <laughs> but I remember being um, in this married group. I was, it wasn't my group. It was a, a group I was a part of years ago. And something was said in the group that just made no sense at all. And one of the, so I remember Hassani had questioned it. And he was just like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Like, you know, X, Y, he had questioned whatever was said. And a lady actually said, well, I really don't need to question anything. If my pastor says it, that's all that matters. <sighs> come on. Come on. Listen, I love my pastor. His name is Hassani Pettiford. <laughs> and I don't, and I reckon, you know, listen, I don't want to even go down that rabbit hole. All I'm going to say is that you will never be held accountable for what somebody else told you and you did. You are only accountable to what you've done. Understand? So when it's time for you to, you know, on that last day when you have to answer to your choices, realize they're not going to judge you based on what somebody told you to do. So you've got to be accountable for you. So real quick, I want to get to these five essential practices, and I want you to download the book, We... A Manifesto for Women Everywhere, you can get it on Amazon and you can download it to Audible and you can listen to it every day. And here's essential practice number one. Get started. Now, there's only four essential practices in the book. I added that one because you have to get started. That's the point. We say we're going to do stuff all the time. We make all kinds of excuses as to why we don't do or why we can't do. And then we wonder why six months have gone by and we're still in the same place. You are only, you're always moving. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. Nothing is sitting still. If you could get some kind of technological magnifying glass, you would see 
that everything is vibrating. And so you must be moving forward. So get started. That's number one, and that comes from me. Number two, gratitude. Gratitude is an essential practice. Um, it's something that I have always practiced on and off. But, you know, you go into these ruts and things may, may not look right and you start worrying about this or that. And then you start to grumble and complain about what's happening. And those grumblings and those complaints actually create things. Your words are things. And those words are like seeds. And what happens is that you're saying stuff out of your mouth. Oh, I'm sick and tired of this person. Or they get on my nerves. Or I'm going to slap somebody. And next thing you know, you did. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know how that happened. You know, you're so stressed out. You're... You know, you're so stressed out that you're forgetting about all the things that you can be grateful for, all the things that are going well, all the blessings that you had, everything that you were thinking about or desiring that happened maybe that you were wanting last year that are happening that you haven't given credit to. So a daily practice would be to get up every morning and write down your gratitudes. And if you can't write down your gratitudes, then speak them out. If you, if you don't want to speak and your voice is hoarse when you get up in the morning, lay in your bed and just think about them. Thank you, God, for waking me up. Thank you for this bed that I'm laying in. Thank you that I'm not on the streets. You know, thank you that I can feel my toes. You know, just thank, be thankful for all the things that you can be thankful for. Number three, and I love this one because I am good for beating myself up, and I know a lot of women are, and that is be gentle. Gentleness, be gentle to yourself. A lot of times, guys, gals, in life, we tell ourselves we can't. We judge ourselves. We say to ourselves, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. You know, I don't know enough. I don't have enough. I'm not looking the part. I don't sound the part. All these things we tell ourselves. And we are our biggest critics. We are our biggest judge. And it's really important for us to begin to change the language that's happening in our head. We're a lot of times not conscious of it. But if you actually be mindful and try to pay attention, you will hear that inner critic always criticizing you, always reminding you about your shortcomings, what you did and what you didn't do, when you said you were going to do this and you didn't. I forgot this, I forgot that. And then, listen, you got enough outside influence criticizing you. You don't need to be your number one critic. You need to be your number one fan. So the next daily practice would be to say some good things to yourself. Write it out if you need to. Remember affirmations? Everyone used to be so into affirmations. Why don't you do that? Write, I'm beautiful. Everything flows in my direction. All the blessings come upon me. You know what I say? I say the windows of heaven are nailed open, wide open, and the blessings fall down and overtake me. Nothing can stop me. You know, I have affirmations that encourage me to face the fear and do it anyway. So whatever the voices are that are hindering you, you need to change those voices and create new voices. And if you get this book and get into this book, it'll tell you how to do that. And then number four, responsibility. Who, who else is going to be responsible for you? Do you know how important you are, woman? Do you know how important you are to so many people? You're important to your children. You're important to your boss. You're important to your brothers, to your sisters, to your children. You're important to so many people. And who is taking care of you? While you're out running around taking care of the world, who's being responsible to you? Well, you're the only person that can be responsible to you understand. So it's time for you to say, you know what, let me figure out what it is that I need. Do I need time every week on a Friday to go out of my house and go check into a hotel and just <laughs> lose it, you know, get into a hotel, get into a hot tub, soak, you know, go get a manicure, pedicure, massage, whatever it is that you need to do. It might not be that. Maybe for you, you just need to get away and go to a library a quiet place and read a book undisturbed. Do you know what I have to do with four children to read a book undisturbed? I'm not even going to tell you right now, but I know you understand if you have at least one child. You understand? So you're going to have to be responsible for yourself and your own self-care. And then last, meditation. Now, for all my Christians, because you know I love the Lord, I want you to know that meditation 
is not of the devil or dark or anything like that. I hear that all the time. The Bible says that you should meditate on his word day and night. So that means that you need to give thoughtful attention to things. How else are you going to accomplish? How else are you going to create? How else are you going to design? So one of the other essential practices is to daily find a quiet place to meditate. Do you know what I do? I like to get a nice corner in my bedroom early in the morning or not too late at night, but when everybody is busy doing stuff in the afternoon or in the evening and just get quiet for 10, 15 minutes. I'll get a scripture. I'll read that scripture. I'll have that scripture on my mind and just get quiet and let that thing manifest ideas and thoughts in my head. It is essential for you to do that because all day long, all you're doing is having scrambling thoughts run through your mind all over the place. It's hard to focus. That is your time to get quiet and to focus and let the Lord bring ideas and concepts to you. That's what happens during that time during meditation. So guys, that's what it is. Those five steps. If you get started with that, get started, gratitude, gentleness, responsibility, and meditation, and you'll see a huge change in your life. Now, if you want to join me, because I want to create a movement, I really do, and I want to see lives changed and manifested, and I want to use my life to help you. I've been through so much. I need to write a book about it. One day I will when enough people die. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes you need a lot of people to be gone before you can tell it all. But there's enough for me to share. And I've created a private group. It's called Be Life. You can go find it. It's on Facebook. And sign up or ask to join. I'll let you in the group. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually do the activities in this book. Because it actually it's really hard. It's hard during the week to do it on your own. And what I think um, would be really cool is for us to do it all together and be able to go up there on the group and see the activities of the week, what we're committing to do, and then get on there and socialize and talk about how things are changing, what's manifesting in your life, what's changed since you started being grateful, and then all the other things. Because not only do you practice these five essential steps or practices, but the book goes into nine steps that totally help you unearth all the crap that's buried. All the stuff that is hidden in you from when you were a little girl. Why you're afraid of certain things. Why you can't face certain fears. Why um, certain things make you uncomfortable or make you angry. You know? There are some people that just get angry about stuff. They don't want to, but they don't know why. It's because something is buried that you need to unearth, acknowledge, and release. So that's what's going to happen in V-Life for me. Because guess what? I'm the first member. <laughs> and I am going through transformation. And how cool will it be for us all to watch each other transform this year? It's only the first quarter, guys. We've got three more quarters to go. So let's get it. And let's see ourselves transform. Let's honor our virtues. And let's take things to the next level. I hope you will join me next week. And tell another woman friend of yours to join me and get ready for big things. I love you all.